G'day, this is Dave Boyle, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the Visual Weave software. A lot of people ask me about the basic workflow of setting up a grid pattern and a left list. So today's uh, video should hopefully shed some light on those topics. What we'll be doing is opening up a simple image, sizing that image to suit our particular blank, creating the grid pattern, editing the, the pattern to suit, and then creating a left list. So to start, when we open up Visual Weave, we're given the options of creating an empty grid, importing an image, or opening a saved project. So today what we're going to do is import an image. So I'll click on that button. By default, it opens up into the Visual Weave Samples folder, but we can navigate to wherever on our hard drive that image file lives. So here is the um, image that I'll be setting up a weaving pattern for today, the, the FedEx logo. I've chosen this logo because it's quite simple, it's bold, it only has a couple of colours, and it's quite easy to um, to visualize so the image that we've imported is shown here and it may be that we want to limit the image that we weave to a, a section of or a, a portion of that image so if i was to drag a box and let go what we can see is that um, trimmed part of the image is shown on our, our would-be rod. So if I click once, it resets the, the selection. If I click and drag, it makes the selection. So for the purpose of today, I'll just leave it at the um, original image size. And we then tell the software how we wish to orient that um, image on the rod. If I click on rotate, here we show the image across the rod. Here we show it going from right to left, across the rod again, and left to right. I'm assuming that I'm weaving from left to right. My handle is on the left-hand side, and the tip of the rod is on the right-hand side. If I'm happy with that orientation, I now need to size that pattern to suit the particular rod that I have. At the moment, the way that image is shown on this mock-up of a rod is um, has nothing to do with how large the image is on the rod. It's simply to show the orientation of the image. We'll now go into the sizing options to size it to suit the rod. And if we went into symbol sizing, that would allow us to nominate the number of rows and columns in our grid pattern. But today we'll be going into advanced sizing and we'll let the software help us decide how large the um, grid image needs to be. So we go into advanced sizing and first of all, we tell the software are we working in millimetres or inches. I use millimetres. Um, I'm an Aussie, that's how I, I grew up. And I'm familiar with these units of measurement. So I then tell the software what diameter the, the rod is, and maybe it's a maybe it's an 18 millimeter diameter rod, and the diameter is the measurement across the rod as if you had measured it with calipers. Don't get the diameter and circumference mixed up. Once we've specified the rod diameter, we go next. We then tell the software what size threads we're going to use. Now, a lot of people seem to use uh, size A for the pattern threads and size C for the wrapping threads. So if we click on change sizes, a thread sizes library is, is loaded and we can choose A for the pattern thread and say C for the wrapping thread. And it's important to, to let the software know what size threads we're using because it, it takes into account the thread size when it calculates the size of the squares in the grid. If you were to use the same size thread 
for pattern threads and wrapping threads, then basically your grid square would would be an actual square. Your grid size would be a square. If in our case we're using a, a different size, the pattern threads are thinner, uh, the wrapping thread is thicker, so those squares actually become rectangles. Let me say OK. So now the, the selection of A and C has been locked in and we go next. Right, we now want to size the pattern to suit the rod. We've got three options. We can either set the number of threads, the pattern threads that we're going to use. And this may be important if we have a particular size weaving jig. For example, it might be a, a 35 um, thread jig or a 100 thread jig and we want to use all of the threads or, or a particular number of slots in that jig. So that's where we would set the, the number of threads to use. We might wish to nominate the height and length of the, the grid pattern or we might want to nominate the angle which the, the woven image is going to take up on the, on the rod. And by that, I mean if you looked at the woven image and, and took a cross section of the rod, you would see that the image, the woven image on the rod would take up a certain amount of the blank. And if you took the ends of that to the center of the, the cross section, you would end up with an angle. And what's important to note here is that any weaving pattern you set up, typically you want to be able to look at that complete pattern without having to spin the rod um, up or down to, to see the whole pattern. So it's important to, to understand what angle on the rod is going to be created by that pattern and get a feel for is our pattern going to be too large or too small. So if I go on to set threads and start increasing the number of threads, as I do that, you will see that in this pictorial here, the angle is increasing and you would expect that as there are more threads in the pattern, more pattern threads used, you're going to take up more space on the surface of the blank. So, for example, if we had a 50 thread jig and we used all of those threads as pattern threads, that's going to create a, an angle of around 56 degrees if we're using size A pattern threads. And we could increase, increase that as much as we want. In fact, here I'm setting the number of pattern threads and as I increase or decrease that we're, we're seeing the effect on the pattern angle. We could choose the option of setting the angle directly and when I do that by selecting this third option set angle I can choose the angle and it will go back and actually calculate the number of threads. So it's quite well integrated in terms of it, it will do the mathematics based on the finished result that you'd want to see. So for the purpose of our example today, let's assume that we had a let's assume that we had a hundred thread jig and we wanted to use every single one of them. So if we go one hundred in our thread selection box, press enter. What that tells us is it's going to generate a, a, a pattern which takes up 111 degrees on our rod. Um, which might be okay, might be a little bit large. Maybe we'll scale that back to say 90 threads. 90 threads, 100 degrees. If your eyeball was looking down here, it's reasonable to assume you're going to see that whole pattern without having to twist the rod forward or backward uh, to, to see any overlap. With those sizes selected, it tells us that the height of the pattern is going to be almost 16 millimeters and the length of the pattern is going to be almost 50 millimeters and you can uh, look at that and, and do a sanity check and decide if you think that's going to look reasonable on your rod. Once you're happy with the, um, the sizing 
choices you've made, you cl then click on the Go to Grid button. When we go to the grid, we're told that the grid is about to be loaded with the image, which might take some time, and any edits that we may have done will be lost. Do we wish to proceed? To which we say yes. And what the software does is it attempts to load the grid with the image from the file that we've loaded, and it tries to match the colors in the original file with our palette of available colors. Now, for starters, at the moment, the software thinks we have all of the colors of the rainbow available to, to select from. And as a result, when it looks at every single color in the original image, sometimes the guess that it makes is, is not quite right. And we end up with these extra colors that, that we don't really want to see. So one thing we can do is limit the number of threads that are available in our, our palette and give the software less choices to make. And that will speed up our job of, of coming up with the, the right grid image. So to limit the number of threads that we have available in our palette, first thing we would do is click on this load palette button. What that does is it shows you what the loaded spool library consists of. And we've got a list of all of the colors that are currently loaded. You can see there's lots of them. What we want to do is limit that. So we click on load new and what that, oops, sorry, cancel. What we click on is edit. And when we click on edit, what it does is it gives you these check boxes next to the original spools that are available. And we select the ones that we want. So for our pattern, we want to have a dark blue. So I'm going to pick this, say, 245 Royal Blue. We also want an orange. Let's just pick 221 Orange. And we want a white. White. And then we want to save new. And we're going to call it FedEx. OK, save that. Yes. It tells us that it's about to build a new color map, which is fine. Say OK. It does its magic in the background, tells you when it's finished, and then you say OK. It says to update the colors in the grid, please use the load grid button, which is this button up in the top left corner. So we say OK. So now when we hit load grid, the software will look at the original image. It will try to match the colors in the image with the available threads and should then generate a grid image based on that. So we say load grid. It says this will resample the original image. All edits will be lost. Do we wish to proceed? And we say yes. And so what it's done now is it's only used blue orange and white, and it's come up with its best guess at what the grid should look like. Now what we can do is, using the editing tools that are available, tidy up the edges of this image. So for example, the pen allows us to pick a color, in our case either orange or blue. If we were to pick blue, we could then go through and click on cells that we want to recolor to, to blue. In fact, if we went to any area and clicked, left clicked and dragged, then we would set those cells to that color. And to undo that, we can click on the undo button. The undo only goes back one step. Um, to select colors, we can either click on the colors up here or we can go into the image, say we wanted to click, say we wanted to select the orange, we could right click above an orange and say pick this color. What that does is it then sets the selection to, to orange. And if I then left click and drag, I can tidy up the edge of that image. So I can go through and I can tidy that image up by eye, or I can use this tool called the ghost. When I click on the ghost, 
what that does is it shows you the original file that we have loaded and clicking on the ghost it superimposes that file over the top of the, the grid image and allows us to make the um, file fully visible or the grid image fully visible or somewhere in between. So basically we can superimpose the, um, the, the actual logo file over the top of the, the grid image and still see the grid image peering through and decide where to do our tidy ups. You'll notice when you load the ghost, sometimes it has to be realigned slightly. For example, it looks like it's all shifted down slightly. So that's what these move buttons are for. If I click upwards, you can see that the ghost image is moving up or the ghost image is moving down or the ghost image is moving left or right. So sometimes there's a little bit of fine tuning with the ghost just to make sure that the uh, file, the logo file, is sitting exactly where it needs to be. Once it is, we could then use our tools to do the tidy ups. So I'm going to pick the blue colour, say so pick this colour, I've now picked blue, and I can go through and I'm clicking and dragging and I'm just following the edge of the ghost to see where I blue edge should be and it'll take a little bit of time in fact this will be the most time consuming part of the the whole exercise is tidying up your your grid now you can see I've accidentally gone too far over to one side so I will right click on the background color pick this color and then use that to, to get rid of the edge that I've just made a mess of also I can see there's a whole line of blues here which should not be there so I'm going to use that background color to color over the top of those clicking as I go and I can see it's missing some blue there so again I'll right click pick the color fill it in and so on same thing on the orange side of things if it's missing the actual color in the grid then you can go through and add it and if there's too much color there on the edges right click pick the background and use the background to recolor the pixels which should be the background color You can spend quite a bit of time working on on this image and it's a good idea to save as you go so we're going to save the project okay uh, we're going to in the projects file we'll call this one FedEx uh, we'll create a new folder first we'll call the folder FedEx we'll go into the file into the folder say save Okay. So we can go through, we could spend quite a bit of time tidying up this image, making it as, as neat as, as we can, and we're almost ready to generate our left list. But before we do, what we need to do is tell the software what colors are the background, or what color is the background, and what colors are the actual pattern colors. And I mean, it's obvious to us, or it may be obvious to us, that white is, is the background color. But to the software, all the software can see is cells of different colors. It does not know what's background, what's, what's pattern threads. We have to tell it that. So put your cursor over an area of background and right click and say, select this color as background or the wrapping thread. So we say, OK. And it says the background color will be set to white because that's the color that we were hovering over when we did that. You say OK. It now knows that the wrap thread is white. And we are now ready to generate a left list. So 
on the tabs up top, we can go to left list and we then choose to build left list. So when we say build, it asks us to give the left list a title. So let's call this our FedEx left list. We say OK. It asks us, do we wish to use colored text in the left list? I'll say yes. And we want to use nicknames. So the nicknames are the shortened names, typically the initials, for example, BL for black or WH for white. Um, and we can use those nicknames in the left list. So we'd say yes. And then it says we're about to create the left list. This might take a little bit of time. We say OK. And what it's doing is it's calculating what coloured threads belong on which wrapping turn. It says it's complete. And it's finished generating the left list. So according to this, on the first wrapping turn, all of the threads are held to the right. On the, we'll pick the third one, on the third wrapping turn, um, the royal blue threads in positions from 5 to 84 are all held to the left. And if we just go back to the grids to compare that and zoom in, we said on the third wrapping turn, which is 1, 2, 3, turn number 3, it starts at 5, and that's actually number 5, and we can see it's number 5 up here goes from number 5 all the way down to, I think we said 84, if I scroll down, down to 84. So that's how the um, left list correlates with the actual grid image. Go yeah, back to the left list. There is a feature in the software that allows you to set colours to different layers. Um, for now we can just this is just a, a text editing box, so for now we could simply delete those layers, we're not using them. It tells us that there's 90 pattern threads, there's 190 wrapping turns. One thing we can do is we can go back to the grid and we can go to grid options and select the option that says view full grid snapshot. We can save that as a JPEG. We could save that somewhere as a JPEG if we wanted to. Um, we can zoom out to see the whole image. We could go back to grid options. We could say copy grid image to clipboard. So what it does is it takes that image, copies it to the clipboard, and when we go into our left list, we should be able to paste that image. And we can do things like resize it, Control X, Control V. If we wanted to, we could export this as a rich text file, which can then be opened up in a, a word processing program like Microsoft Word. In fact, if I save that into FedEx, we can call that FedEx, say save, and then if we were to go into Visual Wave Projects FedEx, if I double click on that file I've just created, I could open that, that up in Microsoft Word, 
and we've now exported that left list into Microsoft Word and we could then format that, save that elsewhere, etc. So that's it in a nutshell. Visual Weave is designed to help you convert image files into grid patterns and then into left lists. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and visit threadcentral.net for more information.